So I went from Leipzig, which is in East Germany, to Dresden, which is also former uh, East Germany. Uh, of course, Dresden was popularized by Kurt Vonnegut in, Sla in Slaughterhouse Five, you know, with the famous phrase, and so it goes. One of the cruelest ironies of modern life is that the places that were bombed to smithereens in World War II just about 80 years ago are now the nicest places to live for two reasons. One, obviously, the infrastructure is new. Um, obviously, most knowledge is incremental. And so you might not know how to build a train 100 years ago, but uh, you probably knew how to do it 90 years ago and then or 100 years ago or 200 years ago. Over time, the processes get faster and better. And eventually you're able to take up that knowledge, especially if you're part of an, of an international rebuilding effort like the Marshall Plan. And so you're able to gather all that information that's come at a great cost, uh, put all that innovation in one place uh, all at once. And you can make that city uh, the centerpiece of a lot of knowledge that, have, that, have been, that has been accumulated over all of human history. So Dresden is actually a nice place. I did not like Leipzig. So I can assume right, right away that Leipzig you know, was probably not bombed as badly as Dresden. Uh, Tokyo is obviously the, the most advanced city uh, in the whole world. And again, that's another city that was bombed viciously. Um, and I'm sure if I go to Hiroshima or Nagasaki, uh, I'm going to have the same opinion without having been there. So one of the uh, problems with, you know, that's one of the coolest ironies. The other irony, although it's probably more stupidity, is that we've been looking at all these problems uh, as economic problems, but they're not economic problems. They're social problems, because typically what ends up happening is you know, if you have a chance to leave a country that's about to be bombed, it's not as if they get bombed right away. There's a buildup. And, uh, you know, social collapse doesn't happen overnight. It typically happens with the assistance of judges and lawyers. Uh, and so it, it happens if you're paying attention. Um, and so one of the examples in the U.S. would be the uh, decision by a majority Catholic Supreme Court that is anti um that would be anti-Muslim um, in terms of the opinion uh, that supported the Trump administration's, it was not a ban, uh, the Trump administration's ability to pick and choose and put certain countries on a uh, more restrictive list. Uh, all of which, all of which, except for one, happened to be majority Muslim countries uh, based on national security uh, concerns. And the idea being that, you know, we're judges, we don't know anything about national security, we're going, to, we're going to defer to the executive branch. Um, and so what ends up happening is that's one sign. Um, but I'm, and the same thing happened here, but just, just obviously more overtly, uh, you know, with, this, with the different patches and uh, restrictions and signs uh, and so on. And so one of the, you know, in order to study economics, it's a waste of time unless you study the movement of people. Because all of human history is the history of refugees. America itself is essentially a country up until, up until the last 20 years or maybe 30 years. Um, it's essentially a country of European refugees, mostly German, because of what happens right here. <laughs> if you could leave, you left. And so the United States benefited uh, from the best Germans. You know, if, even if you think about Austria, um, which is where Hitler was from, Hitler was Austrian, which was not German. Um, you know, the, the California ended up with Arnold Schwarzenegger, not, you know, Austria. Uh, even though Austria has always been a rich country because it, it has a, a lot of oil. Uh, one of the few places in Europe that has oil. Um, so until economics decides to merge with sociology and the movement of people and, and immigration, it's always going to be left behind because typically um, the money follows the, the talent. And the talent historically in Europe has only been in a few places, Venice, Paris, uh, Vienna, I'm trying to think of some other places, but it's not that many. Um, and so ultimately, you know, you have all these centers of commerce that attract all the talent and therefore the money. And all, a lot of that comes from immigration. Uh, the question is, how do, you, how do you spread out that talent so you don't end up in a position where that same money follows the talent and ends up making a few cities all over, all over the world look the same? Hopefully, without having to be the, uh, in a situation like Dresden. 80 years ago.